Hey guys, my name is William Justice. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. And yes, I did find some lost effect files. And actually it was the new Resolve update 17.4 that helped me find them. Okay, so the lost effects. Um, one of the new updates that Resolve has been working on is the DRFX effects files. These make it a lot easier to install and manage your effects. And I had not really used them before. So I figured with the new Resolve update, this was a good time to go back and put all of my effects in DRFX files, create icons, I found a lot of stuff, a lot of experiments, a lot of um, old effects that I had been working on. Some of them were kind of interesting. So I probably just got distracted and moved on to another idea. A lot of times I'm just trying things out. Uh, I've created a bundle with all of my effects so you can download them in uh, one file and get them installed. If you want everything, they're all there. Um, otherwise you can just kind of pick and choose and download the ones that you want to use. So to use the DRFX effects files, um, you, did, you do need to make sure that you have an updated version of Resolve. All right, so for my website, let's take a look at a few of the effects, and then we're gonna take a look at the new effect that I added. I'm gonna kind of walk through and show you how to set it up and use it. If you're interested in DaVinci Resolve and want to learn more about editing and fusion effects, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Okay, so today's lost effect is called Switch Overlay Out Back. And I've already used it uh, quite a few times in this video. I don't know if you've noticed or not. The effect basically takes the current screen, treats it as an overlay, and shrinks it down to a specific position on the screen, revealing whatever the track is underneath. You know, and I think I probably stopped working on this because it's similar to the DVE effect that is in Resolve. Um, but this one was animated, so it's a little bit different, and I think it works pretty well. Let's take a look at how to use the Just Overlay Outback and how to set it up. Okay, let's take a look at how to set up and use the Overlay Outback effect. Um, we're also gonna look at the effects library, some of the changes in there, and a couple of enhancements I like to see that might make it a little bit faster and easier to use. We're gonna go through the options on the effect, how to install it, and then we're gonna take a real quick look at uh, how it's set up in Fusion. We're gonna start with a blank timeline. So the first thing we're gonna do is add our media. So we're gonna click on the media pool, and I have this clip right here of myself set up. And all we need to do is take that and drag it in to the timeline area. To apply the overlay outback effect, let's go to the effects library and click effects up here. There's a couple of things in here that make it a little bit easier to find the effects with Resolve 17.4. Um, let's go to effects down here. And when we scroll down, you'll notice that there is a grouping or a folder of all the effects um, for William Justice. And these are the effects that I set up in my DRFX files. And with 17.4, um, you have these nice groupings that are going to make the effects easier to find. So they're not going to be mixed in with these big long lists. The other great thing is that you'll notice on the effects that there's this little arrow here. You can click that to expand and see, see other groupings or other effects you've installed. So if you know what you're looking for, you click on it and it's going to narrow that list for you, make it really easy to find. In this case, we're going to look for just overlay out back. We're going to take it and drag it right onto our clip. Now that the effect is applied, it's going to, the clip is going to fill the screen. And as we play, it's going to shrink down to its overlay position. And then at the end of the clip, it's going to come back to fill the screen. The great, the great thing here is if you want to adjust the clip, you can stretch it out and the animation will automatically apply and move to the length of the clip. For the effects library, a couple of enhancements I'd like to see, they may be working on these. They have this favorites option here where you can click the star and set up your favorite effects. But for me, it's not really useful because they all go in this little bitty favorites category. And if you have a lot of favorites, it gets really long and then you end up um, scrolling through this list right over here trying to find them. Um, I think it would be really awesome if you start a bunch of effects and then you could click a star up here to filter it out so that when you're looking through the toolbox or any of these things, it only shows your favorite effects. So you imagine if you click toolbox and you click a little star up here, only you would only see the favorite effects as you navigated through the list. Um, the other thing I think would be great is if it worked a little bit like Fusion. Okay, so imagine we have the media pool here, the effects aren't open and we have our clip selected and you could hit shift space and it would pop open a list of effects. We could type in the name of the effect that we wanted hit enter and it would be automatically applied right there without having to mouse over to the effects library and do some searching. And they're probably working on these kind of enhancements, um, but I think it would be interesting and uh, help out if they were in there. Okay, so we want this clip to actually overlay something. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this clip to track two and then take any clip we want and slide it right in underneath that clip and we have the overlay effect. And it animates in and it will animate back to full screen at the end. Okay, so what are, what are some of the options here? Let's select the clip and then click effects. You see we have the just overlay out back. So I'm gonna run through the options real quick here. Um, first one is a level, so you can kind of have some transparency so it blends in a little bit. 
Um, the next option is the overlay size. It's just a relative size and then the overlay position. So let's uh, double click this to reset it. And we have the overlay right in the center of the screen. And let's bring the size up a little bit so we can kind of see it right there. Okay, a few other adjustments. There's an overlay width, which lets you adjust how wide it is. And the overlay height. There's a media zoom, which is gonna zoom in on the media. So if you wanted to zoom in on a specific part, you could do that. And there's a X offset and a Y offset, so you can shift the media around. So if you wanted it to be centered on something different. We have a border width. You can get a real thick border. And there is a corner radius, so we can kind of get the little rounded corner look. Let's reset some of those. We'll bring the corner radius down. And uh, so if you didn't want to have a border at all, you could take border width and bring it down to zero. Then you have no border. A couple things down here, we have animations. And this is going to set the animating in and out. So um, this is the frames in and frames out. Um, this is using my uh, just timing curves, which is based off the anim curves. You don't need to know a whole lot about that other than if you want it to zoom, come in faster or slower, you can adjust the number of frames. And then there's some options here to adjust the easing curve. Um, if, you, if you're familiar with those, that those affect how fast the animation starts and slows down. Okay, let's go to the border settings. Um, real simple, there's a border alpha. You can kind of have a little uh, transparency on the border. And then there's a border color. So if we want to change the border color to uh, say yellow, we just go to yellow and, okay, and then we have our yellow border. And the last section down here is a drop shadow. Um, it's not on by default, but if you want it, you can uh, boost up the shadow strength. This helps you get a little bit of separation between your overlay and the background. Just a basic drop shadow, kind of a nice effect. And that's, that's really all there is to it. You just drop the effect on and adjust some of the controls and the overlay is set up and ready to go. To install the effect, go to my website, buildjustice.com. Click the download effects option on the right side of the screen. Right here, you can download all my effects by clicking this all effects bundle. That'll uh, download one file that has everything packaged together. Or if you just want an individual effect, you can scroll down. Um, right here is the overlay effect and you can click download DRFX. And we get a download DRFX file right here. And all we need to do is open that up and double click on it. So now to install, all we need to do is open this file. So we can double click on it. Um, Resolve doesn't always pop up when you do that. Um, it should open it. Um, but if, if Resolve doesn't come to the front, go ahead and click on Resolve and you'll see we have an option here to install the effect. We click install and it's gonna put it right in our effects library for us. It's that simple. All right, next let's take a really quick look at how this effect is set up in Fusion. Um, to do this, we can click on the clip, go into the inspector and click effects. You'll see the effect right here. And to get into Fusion and see how the effect is set up with the nodes, you just need to click this little icon. Okay, this is the basic setup here of the effect. What we have here is, uh, I set this up as a group. So when you get in here, you're gonna see this group. You can double click on it to open it up and see all the nodes. Uh, most everything is based off of the, at least the timing is based off of this JTC node, which is uh, just timing curves. And you'll see it has this value right here. And this value, as you play the animation, goes from zero to one, just like that. And that's used through these expressions to zoom in and zoom out. Um, so the first merge here, let's take a look at this. The first merge node is going to control the size of the clip inside of the frame. Um, these rectangles are set up for the corner radius and the masking of that. This one, the uh, second merge merges in the background color, which is the border that goes around it. And you can see we have this rectangle here. And this, these are some expressions to set up the border width based off of the size of the main rectangle up here. First transform down here is going to control the size. So let's take a look at that. You can see that that's controlling the size. We have some expressions in here that's based off of that JTC value. The last transform is going to adjust the position. So we have a formula in here that's adjusting the position based off what you have set from in the settings. Let's take a look at that one. And it's all merged in on top of a transparent background right there. And then we have a drop shadow. And all of these properties, when you click on the group right here, these are the properties in the inspector. These are the ones that you're going to be able to see in the timeline. That's a real quick overview. It's pretty simple. It's uh, using this JTC node with these changing zero to one values and expressions in all of these guys over here to make the animation work. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you can find really good uses for all of my effects. If you do and uh, have any comments or questions, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Um, I have some new videos coming out real soon. I'm gonna kind of dig through and pull out some more of these lost effects. They may take a little bit more time to get them up, um, but I think I have some really interesting things in there. We'll see what comes up. 
Thanks for watching.